Thank you very much. Nice to be in uh, Southern California. I, I've been living in Australia the past five months. Yeah? You from down under? Yeah. Been living in Melbourne. I, uh, I still, too cold? Well, it's winter now. You're from Brizzy. Well, thank you, but I only have five minutes. Um, I, uh, I still haven't acclimated there. Um, little things, little things are disconcerting, like the time difference. It's 17 hours. That can be confusing. I've been getting a lot of phone calls at strange hours from people back home who are bad at math. What time is it there? Oh, sorry, I must not have carried the one. <laughs> it's been a good experience, though, living abroad. Uh, I've seen some interesting things. Uh, for instance, there are actually kangaroo crossing signs on the highways in Australia. And uh, you're supposed to slow down when you see one, and that can be annoying because the kangaroos will hop up to your car and try to wash your windshield. <laughs> get really nasty if you don't tip them well. Um, lots of exotic wildlife in Australia, especially birds. Parrots and cockatoos are everywhere. And whenever I see one, I get really excited and yell, look, a parrot! And Aussies just stare at me because they're used to them. I guess it's like being in this country and screaming, look, a pigeon! <laughs> My cat spends the whole day uh, stalking these birds in the backyard. I, I've tried to discourage him by making him wear a collar with a bell on it. And it worked at first, you know, but then the cat improved his killing technique. You know, now when the birds hear the bell, it's too late to do anything about it. It's like, isn't that the cat? Ah! <laughs> anyway, I've always enjoyed traveling abroad. Um, in a few weeks, I'll be visiting one of my favorite cities, uh, Montreal, where people are bilingual. That can make me feel ignorant, you know, because uh, people will address me in French and their speech is so beautiful. I don't want them to stop talking because when they do, I have to answer back with, what? <laughs> Great shopping in Montreal, uh, though that's not one of my favorite activities. Uh, salespeople intimidate me. You know, they push so hard. One time I was shopping for clothes, and this guy tried to sell me a jacket that he knew was ugly because he kept stressing how durable the fabric was. You know, just what I need, clothes that aren't only ugly but will be ugly for a long time. <laughs> last, year, uh, last year I tried shopping by mail. I ordered my girlfriend some clothes from Victoria's Secret. Um, bad idea. The uh, models in this catalog are so beautiful that by the time I got done making my selections, I wanted to break up with my girlfriend and <laughs> date one of them. I should feel more comfortable in the marketplace. My degree from college is in economics. Unfortunately, most of what we studied was theory. I spent a lot of time determining how many widgets a person would produce given a certain set of circumstances. Widget, I learned, is an imaginary product used in economics models. Just about everything in economics is imaginary, including the job I got when I graduated. <laughs> what else is new? My, uh, my cousin just got married. Uh, in fact, she's on her honeymoon right now. The, uh, the honeymoon is an odd tradition, isn't it? You know, you've just taken the vows when you rush off to some vacation hideaway where you spend every second of every day with the very person to whom you just pledged your entire life. You know, two weeks apart, I think, would make more sense. <laughs> you have the rest of your lives to get sick of each other. Why rush it? <laughs> See, marriage scares me. I I've learned that there's a big difference between living with someone and just going out with it. Because you don't just see the person when she's at her best. You bear witness to the entire process. It can be very sobering. It's like eating a hamburger after you've watched the cow being slaughtered. <laughs> I'm not good at meeting women. I never know what to say to them. All the good lines have been used. There's gang heckling now. More friends from Australia. I don't know what to say to them. All the good lines have been used. I wish I would have lived 200,000 years ago. You know, back then, uh, would have been a good opening line. <laughs> Women would have swooned. He's so witty. <laughs> Sometimes I try too hard to make a good impression. A while back, a woman asked me if I would walk her to her car, and I said yes, but I didn't feel good about it because I knew in my heart she was no safer with me than without me. <laughs> the first hint of danger, I would have been out of there. Never been very smooth with women. My first time in bed was a total disaster. I made the mistake of lying to my girlfriend. I told her that I'd been with other women. 
Consequently, there was a huge gap between what she expected from me and what I was able to deliver as a lover. <laughs> it was the difference between the picture of the free toy on the back of the cereal box and the actual item. I had no idea what I was doing in bed. I was like a small child blindfolded, swinging a big stick wildly at a pinata, just hoping that I'd get lucky. I should have just leveled with my girlfriend. She was a great woman. She played the tuba in the marching band. She was very easygoing. She was pretty much happy with anything she didn't have to carry. Uh, anyway, I hope that I haven't been whining. Uh, Members of my generation tend to whine too much. We even have shows now like Donahue on which people can appear to complain about their lives and circumstances. I try not to watch these programs, you know. When I do, it's always with the sound off. I try to guess what the topic of the day is. <laughs> Let's see, they're all very short and they seem to be spitting a lot. Mm, midgets with speech impediments? <laughs> Damn, jockeys with dentures. <laughs> Thank you very much. 